Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is the 70th psalm, which is found on page 682 of the Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me turn back, because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he had said this to, them, to him. Some thought that because Judas had the com common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what you need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. 
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You've probably heard of the um, uh, the church, whether or not it exists, I, I don't know, um, that uh, is said to have a sign at the door on the way out. This was a sign that was intended for uh, people who would leave right after communion, the sign on the door on the way out that says, that reads, Judas left first. Um, uh, I don't know whether such a church exists, but it was always it was one of the standard jokes um, for church-going folks who were eager to get to the golf course or to brunch as soon as they possibly could without sticking around for the post-communion prayer or the uh, blessing and dismissal, let alone the last hymn and the voluntary afterwards. Here we see, we hear the story, the account of Judas leaving first. And part of the question about this is, where's the good news in this? It's telling the way St. John ends this paragraph with that short sentence, and it was night. Surely, uh, John is not just filling us in with information. Surely, he is setting the scene. He is telling us that darkness has fallen, that it is night at that time in every conceivable sense of the world. Literally, it was nighttime, and figuratively, it was the nighttime, the dark time the hour when things happen under the cloak of darkness and with nefarious purposes. It was night. It's striking that Jesus goes through this little, let's call it a charade, to reveal who it is that's going to betray him. It's an unusual set of details here that Peter has to motion to the beloved disciple who may or may not be John in order to get him, prompt him to get Jesus to say something about what he means when he says that someone's going to betray him. And then Jesus doesn't just name Judas Iscariot and said, Judas says, well, it's the one whom I give the piece of bread to after I've dipped it in the dish. And then does it happen immediately? Is there time? that follows we don't know, St. John doesn't tell us, but then eventually Jesus takes the piece of bread. He takes the piece of bread, you understand. He takes the piece of bread. He's already taken bread and wine and given them to the disciples saying, this is my body and this is my blood. He's already knelt at their feet with a basin of water and washed their feet. And now, having been through these acts of love and self-giving with them, what does he do again? He takes the piece of bread and he gives it to Judas. He doesn't have words with Judas. He doesn't scold Judas. He does say to Judas, what you must do, do quickly. He accepts what's going to happen. He accepts that Judas is going to betray him. He expects Judas to accept it as well as he does. And he gives him the piece of bread, an extension, a strange, unusual, maybe even in Congress, extension of the bread that he shared with the disciples not long ago. Is it fair to say that Jesus gives himself to Judas? He doesn't whisper into the beloved disciple's ear or to Peter's ear and say, it's Judas, follow him outside and take care of him in the alley. Which is what I'd have asked Aaron to do if he'd been there with me. Instead, Jesus gives the piece of bread to Judas. Am I being fanciful when I ask whether or not we are seeing Jesus hand himself over to his betrayer.
because he's willing to go. Remember how this little episode began after Jesus has washed their feet. Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. Actually, more than one would betray him in many ways. One betrayed him completely, which was Judas. But don't forget that Peter's still going to deny him three times, which is its own kind of betrayal. The rest of them are going to forsake him and flee, which is its own kind of betrayal. They're not all going to be there at the foot of the cross. Yes, the beloved disciple will be there with Mary, his mother, but they too will betray him in their various ways. One of you will betray me is an understatement of a remarkable kind. And still Jesus gives himself over to his betrayers. He gave his back to the smiters. They didn't have to tear the shirt off of his back. He gave his back to them. It is one of the great mysteries of human thought and experience as to why this, un this story of salvation unfolds in this way. Why must God's love be articulated in this particular way? Why must Jesus give himself over to his own betrayer? Why must he give his back to the smiters? We don't really know why it must unfold this way. We don't know why Judas must do what he must do. We only know that Jesus said to him, what you must do, do quickly. Jesus knew that he had to do it. Did he know that he had to do it because he know that, knew that somehow inside betrayal was part of who Ju Judas was? Did he know that he had to do it because he knew somehow inside of betrayal is part of who all of us are? It's part of our own human condition. And there is no way that Christ would make it to the cross, would make it to salvation without betrayal. Maybe he simply knew it was inevitable, us being who we are. One of you will betray me. Ah, more than one would betray him. And yet he takes a piece of bread, he dips it in the dish, which I assume makes it more delicious. Does he dip it in the dish where there's olive oil and salt, making it more luscious, the gift of bread more tasty, more perfect, more desirable, as he gives himself to his own betrayer? He gave his back to the smite. It was night. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray for the church and for the world using form six of the prayers of the people found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. 
for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Daniel, our bishop, for Nora, Stephen, Nicholas, and Gordon, my priest brothers and sisters who worship and work in this place and parish, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially all those who are sick with the coronavirus, all doctors, nurses, medical workers, and other essential workers of various occupations who put themselves at risk for the well-being and benefit of others. All those who are unemployed or otherwise in financial dire straits and who are worried about their livelihoods, their careers, their families, and their own well-being. All those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who are struggling for justice has been denied and are working to bring about an end to the sin of racism in our hearts and in our society and all those beloved of this parish community who are sick or in need, especially remembering to pray for Chris, George, Sue, Kent John, George, John, Homer, Mary Jane, Marlene, Jean, Marguerite, Kathleen, Kathleen, Lori, Elizabeth, Mark, Ira, Kevin, Colleen, Jensen, Julia, Will, and all those others who we remember in the silence of our hearts. Continuing also to pray for peace in our time and for an end to warfare, violence, oppression, and the threat of terrorism, wherever they hold sway in the world. Praying for relief to refugees who are in search of a homeland, for relief to those who live in great poverty in so many places around the world, especially those living in poverty here in our own city who are our neighbors. Praying for those who are homeless, hungry, lost, frightened, alone, for those who are languishing in prison, especially those who have been sentenced to death or those who have been un unfairly imprisoned. Praying for an end to the gun violence, which takes so many lives in this city and in so many cities and villages around this nation. Praying for relief to those who are suffering with mental illness or struggling with addiction and for all those who suffer in any way, in body, mind, or estate. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, giving thanks especially for the beauty of this day, for the rain that waters the earth, and for the sun that bathes it with its warmth, giving thanks for the signs of the beauty of spring that are all over the city at this time giving thanks for all those who work to prepare for the, for the ceremonies and liturgies of Holy Week and Easter, giving thanks for all those who work to care for the poor and the needy, for those who are hungry and who need someone to care for them, giving thanks for the welcome table and for St. James School, for St. Simon's and for the Church of the Crucifixion, and for the church throughout the world as we pray through this holy week. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, remembering especially all those who've died from the coronavirus in the past day, and all those whose lives have been taken from them in acts of war and violence in recent days. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love that you've made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death 
we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Mark, the Evangelist, and with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.